I missed it, but that was the first pull. First pull. And she sounds like she's brand new. Could you be happier? We'll find out when I get a 12 o'clock. There you go. It's the hill today on the YouTube channel. Oh, hell yeah. Well, in the shop today, we have a Tao Tao, a Teo Teo Motors Sport XX, uh, otherwise known as the Mud Hawk 200, the Raptor 200, goes by many different names, all the same engine setup. It's a belt driven to a chain driven uh, centrifuge clutch system. I don't know about that, but it has a lot of issues going on with it. And we got to start diagnosing it. The screen doesn't work. It won't idle very well. It uh, has, I think, a clutch issue. When it is running, it doesn't want to go in gear. It doesn't want to take off except for high RPM, which isn't right. It should take off at pretty, pretty semi-low RPM. So, yeah. This is uh, the first thing we got to work on this year. So, let's, go, let's delve into it. Well... <clears throat> First step is going to be taking and labeling all these electrical connections. <clears throat> Boy, they really, uh, really blows my mind that this this thing would need that much electrical. We got to test this though before I go too much further. I want to test this ground to see if it turns the screen on because they've been having an issue with that screen not working, and that right there comes directly from the screen. So we're going to start there and see what happens. Well, here it is. We've got the body all off of it. Right off the bat, I can tell you that this is going to need to be fixed. That motor is not snug anymore. And while I was working on some stuff, I also noticed right here. We're going to have to tighten that all up, fix that too. So first step is going to be getting into that air box, taking a look at that, see where we're at here. All the wheels, turn the light on here. All right, if you look in here, you can see that all these hub bolts are loose. So we're gonna have to solve that problem too. Hopefully they're not stripped. Anyway, we're gonna start tearing her apart. We 
we got her to uh, turn over and start pretty good. It was uh, pretty simple to do. Uh, let's see here, turn the key on. We also got our screen to work too, which is super good because it wasn't working and now it is. So now we can see the RPM, they go up, come on down. But yeah, we got her uh, idling pretty darn good. She's revving. Revving up pretty high too, so that's good. It doesn't sound horrible either. So we're moving in the right direction. Now that we got it idling and revving properly, the belt looks pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and get it started and I'm going to put it in gear and we'll see what happens. Well, I got the list together of everything we got to do to this guy. Um, actually, it turned out to be not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Like right off the bat, I figured there'd be all kinds of super big issues, but there doesn't really seem to be anything super major that can't be fixed. Nothing's broke, needs to be welded or fabricated, nothing like that. First on the list, we have a new carburetor. You know, they're just so cheap these days that they're almost not worth rebuilding. This one, I don't know if it's just, you know, from the gasoline or whatnot. It just has, it's non-adjustable at this point. So I'm going to suggest that we put a new carburetor on that. And that'll solve that problem right there. Uh, front, right, top tie rod is loose. Now if we come over here and take a look at that. Turn this light out real quick. All right, see how how that guy's moving in there. Yeah, we're gonna have to tighten that up, <clears throat> make that a little bit better. Next on the list, let's see, uh, rear wheel hub bolts. So all the hub bolts are loose. So we're gonna have to take all these off here and lock tight those back up. These ones especially. I think I showed it in a different video, but man, I got wiggle. The wheel's not going to be on there for much longer. Motor mounts. All right. Now, here's the thing. I don't know if we can just order these motor mounts or what. So, we might have to fabricate something for them. But if you look, 
don't know how much I can move that motor. Even. Look at that one and see it. Yeah, that's not supposed to be like that. Then we got an air filter. And one more little thing. The right side headlight wire got pulled out maybe by a branch or something like that. We'll have to fix that up for him. So I'm going to get the parts list over to the guy. See what he wants to do. When I'm from Michigan. Anyway. Early morning. anyway, good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you are. We're back working on the Tau motors. First thing we're going to do is try to figure out how to fix this dirty movement that this motor has right now. First and foremost, get everything locked down, and then we're going to be replacing the carburetor. We got a couple suspension things to do. Putting the gas tank back on it. Zip tying down the battery and going for a ride. All right, well, there's some funkiness going on here. That's all I can say because this is the motor mount bolt. For some reason, there's an extra large nut on there, which normally when you do something like that, it's because it's stripped out. There you go. But in this occasion, what I think was happening is this bolt is just way too long for that motor mount. So he was trying to make up for somebody. I'll say somebody was trying to make up a, a gap difference by using a bolt, which is a trick I've commonly used once in a while when you don't have enough washers. Problem is, is they weren't securing the motor because they were on the outsides of the bracket instead of the inside. So we're going to change that all around. So hey, we're gonna take a second here and we're gonna introduce you to our shop dog today. Good boy. Let him know. Go give him a woo woo woo. All right, give him a woo woo. A woo. Yeah, can you say, oh, hell yeah? Well, it's kind of like he said, oh, no, oh, yeah. Well, anyway. If he wouldn't have picked up another motor, I was going to have it, have Leon go do the Leon test on this motor over here. Because what we've done is we've restacked our washers on the bushings on the inside of the bracket. So that way uh, the pressure is actually being applied evenly across the entire bracket. See if you can, get, see if you can move that motor a little bit. Let me get a hand my right hand. I want to help. Oh, oh no. there we go. She ain't going nowhere. Yeah, she's nice and solid now. It should stay that way too because it's uh properly sensed. Looks like we got her all back together here. 
the air filter and everything reconnected brand new carburetor we fixed the dash we fixed the wheels we fixed the bolts here uh there's quite a bit actually that we did right now what we're going to do is we're going to start it up see how she idles and revs and wait. we go okay here we go Oh, whoa. I think that's a diaphragm though. Other than that, it sounds pretty good. It's not shaking around. Alright. I think we did her. We're back. Well, I'll call that a result. What about you? That is a good result. All right. Gonna have a happy camper. So, without a pressure gauge, this is how we go about setting the pressure of the tires and trying to make them even. Take a little bit out, and you step back, and you look at it and go, Almost. Joe Billy, I... Oh, hell yeah! Oh, hell yeah! Oh, hell yeah! 